Um, in light of my last message that I gave, I had this thought um, just come across my mind um, that I should revisit a message I gave back in 2015. Um, and I, in the past, I've tried to um, give this message, and every time the Lord has just said no, no. So a couple of weeks ago, this thought crossed my mind, and I thought, okay. So I went and tried to um, look it up on YouTube because I knew it was on YouTube and couldn't find it. it. It's gone, no longer there. So I thought, well, I don't know. Well, I'll think about it. Two days later, I get this email from a person going, I just listened to this message of yours on YouTube. They gave the link and they just started describing um, part of my message. And I went, wait a minute that's that message that I couldn't find. So I clicked on the link and sure enough, someone had downloaded it and reposted it on their um, their own YouTube channel. So I said, Lord, do you want me to talk about this again? And I felt the Lord say, yeah, uh, because I've gotten some extra revelation um, to add to it. So this message I gave came about from a dream that I had Um so I want to describe, tell you this dream, and then I'll discuss that dream. I also want, it's a dream about music. Um, and I also want to talk about um, how anointings work specifically with music. Um, this is something that Lord has given to me um, in a couple of encounters. So this dream, I was in a dream, I was going down to the local post office to pick up a parcel. I went to the counter and they handed the parcel over to me. You know, it was sort of that sort of shape. So I opened it up. Um, but before I opened it up, I realized there was no return address. But I, it was, the I felt in the dream that it was, this parcel had some kind of authority, like governmental department or something like that. So I opened up this, this parcel and it was a book and it was the most beautifully bound book, you know, expensive um, to make, um, just beautiful. I opened it up and, you know, the pages were of the most expensive paper. The printing was just uh, the most expensive printing. And inside this book was music. And I can read music. Um, to some degree, to, at, a, at a basic level. But I looked at this music, I couldn't understand any of it. It was just beyond what I could comprehend. So I decided, well, I'm going home. I might pop into my um, music teacher's place and show her this book. So I stopped there, went in and said, hey, I've got this book. What do you make of it? I gave her this book, she opened it up, and the words she spoke is, oh, it's this book. And I said, what book? And she said, this book has divided the music industry. Half have embraced the music in this book, and half have rejected this music in the book. And I took this book back off her and I woke up immediately and when I woke up there was a satanic presence in my room um, so I got up immediately and and prayed against it, it took about 20 minutes for me to clear this uh, satanic atmosphere and I asked the Lord what what was that was that a dream from you or was that a dream from Satan and I puzzled over this you know I shared my dream um, with other people and they were like no I've got no interpretation it wasn't until about two and a half weeks later when I was praying that the Lord um, came and interpreted the dream for me he said it was a dream from him he said the book represents the Christian music industry. And the music that is in that book is satanic. The 
that is why I could not read the music. That is why it was beyond what I would be able to understand, because it was satanic. That is why there was a satanic presence in my room, because in the dream I was holding that book. So I said, okay, explain further. And the Lord said to me, there are musicians, Christian musicians that profess to be Christians, but behind closed doors, they worship Satan. Now we can take that and put that across all of the industries within the Christian realm. It's just not the music industry. It's the literature. It's the film and television. It's churches. Satan has infiltrated all of these areas. You know, 1 Peter 5, verse 8. Let's read 1 Peter 5 and verse 8. It says, and I'm reading this from the pure word. It says, you must be serious. You must be watching because the adversary of yourselves, the devil, is a roaring lion and walking, seeking who he may by his choice completely swallow. You must be serious about this. You must be watching. The devil is walking around to see who he can swallow. You know, we need to be able to have the wisdom of the Lord so we can look at things and not follow the herd mentality. Yeah, there's a lot of sheep all out there. And they're following the herd mentality. We have to be able to have wisdom and discernment that we don't follow the man crowd but we follow jesus the lord continued the modern music industry he said has been infiltrated from its inception late 60s early 70s now, this makes perfect sense. Satan owns the secular music. It's his. He's got total control over it. So it makes sense that when the Christian community just started creating, you know, Christian music labels, it makes sense. Infiltrate it when it's been established. Now, the Lord led me to do some research um, and I came across certain musicians from the 70s that were planted by Satan. Now I'm going to stop right here and say a couple of things about that. I don't know for sure if it was the actual musicians or the record label or to the producers that are behind it all. But certainly the end result, you know, the musician is the is the the face of it. They sing the song, they play the guitar, play the piano. They're the end product we see. And wherever that infiltration was, with maybe it was the person who writes the lyrics, the producer, the record label whoever it is, they are behind it all. They are being um, infiltrated 
into the Christian music industry by Satan. Now, one of the things the Lord said to me when I came, I realized certain musicians from the 70s. I mean, you don't have to look hard nowadays to see the infiltration. It's pretty blatant. But we're talking about musicians from the 70s who have influence and who have influenced the musician, up and coming musicians. But the Lord said to me, do not expose who they are. Now, why would the Lord say that? Well, it comes down to this. The Lord wants you to ask him who they are. So don't email me saying, who should I listen to? Ask the Lord. He's a jealous God. Stop going to people when you should be going to the Lord. You should be asking the Holy Spirit. You know, people are fallible. People get things wrong. Stop going to leaders and prophets when you should be going to the Lord. Yes, we need leadership. Yes, we need prophets. But we should be going to the Lord for, for our everyday things. You know, God sent a lying spirit to all the prophets, his prophets, to lead the people astray. Do you want a scripture for that? 1 Kings 22, 22. God sent a lying spirit to receive, to deceive the nation. And it came out of his prophets. And there was only one prophet that spoke the truth. But what did the people do? Followed the herd. There was no discernment. You need discernment. God is jealous. And if you are defaulting to people and not him, he's going to send a lying spirit to get your attention. So I'm going to give you an exercise and I want you to do this exercise. I want you to log on to a Christian bookshop because, you know, actually going there is difficult at the moment. So log on, log online to a Christian bookshop. And this is what I want you to ask. I hope you're writing this down. I want you to ask the Holy Spirit, what should I not buy? And I want you to browse through the Christian website, Holy Spirit, what should I not buy? And when you get something from the Holy Spirit, I want you to write down whatever that was. Is it a feeling? Is it a thought? Is it a picture? Is it a word? What is that? I want you to write that down and be descriptive of what it is that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. And that is for don't buy this. Now, once you have done that, I then want you to ask the Holy Spirit, what should I buy? And browse that shop. And when you get buy that, I want you to write down what that feeling is, what that picture was, what that word was. You need to be able to discern from the right and wrong. You know, I have a, I know someone who works in a 
Christian bookshop and he says, I find it really difficult because there's so much garbage in there that I find it difficult to work in that place because there is so much deception At the time that I received this dream, there was another person called Scott uh, McLeod. He had, he was at a Christian music festival or, or something to that description. He was in the lobby of the event and he had an open vision and he saw a giant snake all through the lobby. You know, we're talking six foot thick snake. This is in a Christian music festival. And he saw people leaning up against the snake, chatting away. He even saw people who were inside the snake talking to people on the outside of the snake. Hey, what you doing? Yeah, we're here for a Christian music festival. Oh, that's cool. Inside the snake. He even saw people willingly allow themselves to be swallowed by the snake. What was that scripture I read? You must be serious. You must be watching because the adversary, adversary of yourselves, the devil, as a roaring lion is walking around seeking who he may by his choice completely swallow this is serious and i'm explain to you how serious this is in a minute so this guy scott he's been in the music industry producer I think he was a producer and he said they used to have round tables. How can we make money? They would listen to music from the world and go, hey, that's a really good people are buying that. Let's just alter it a little bit. And we're going to have a hit on our hands. He said we weren't. There were no Bibles. On the round tables that they were having their meetings. There's no discussion of the Holy Spirit. It was, how can we make money? This is in a the Christian industry. This is serious. So he wrote a book called Snakes in the Lobby. Now, this guy had this vision around the same time as I had my dream. Now, I didn't understand at the time of how serious this is. God literally threw me in the snake pit with this dream that, and interpretation of the dream. I had no idea what I was about to be hit with. Because I, I said, I need, you know, I was talking with my, my dad and I said, I need to get this message out because I think it's important. Um, yeah, understatement. <laughs> um, and so I, I was given an opportunity to share this message. Now, I had a warning. God gave me a warning dream. And I had this dream on Friday. I shared this with Dad, and we both concurred. This is whatever the outcome of this dream it's serious so dad was like just just be careful i'm going yeah yeah i had that dream friday on monday i was in hospital this is serious i had the worst experience that i have had I've had the worst migraine I've ever had in my life. Nothing 
they did at the hospital could touch it. You know, initially they gave me, you know, really strong headache tablets, stuff that you just can't buy, nothing. They put me on morphine, nothing. And in the midst of this migraine headache, me vomiting, and you know, when you have such a bad head, vomiting's the last thing you want to be happening. In the midst of all this, I said to the Lord, if this is the price I must pay to bring the truth, then I will endure it. They had to ship me to another hospital because nothing was touching it. I mean, I was so out of it, I didn't even know they were taking blood from me and testing my blood. Blood results came through and it was high in troponin, which is a chemical reaction from a heart attack. So I, they, they shipped me to another hospital. You know, I'm talking, this is, this is now several days. Ship me to another hospital. They're putting me through all of the tests. Tests come back. There's no sign of a heart attack. We, we can't understand it. The chemicals tell us you had a heart attack. But your heart's fine. There's nothing to indicate that. There was a contract taken out by Satan to take me out. This is how serious this topic is. A contract was put out to take my life. Now, I get to Lancaster, USA. I've got oh, three days to recover from jet lag. On the second day, what starts happening? I start getting a headache. It starts getting worse. Yeah, my dad's there, brother Sadhu's there, they pray for me. I go to my room. I go like to lie down. You know, 10 o'clock at night um, and thankfully I've had the day previous to just um, the Lord gave me some more further revelation to speak the day previous but on the you know the night I'm speaking the next morning on that night 10 o'clock at night I'm lying there thinking this is going to wipe me out it's, it's not getting better, it's getting worse. So I get up. 10 o'clock at night, I get up. And I start warfare. You know, doing warfare when you've got a, a migraine headache, it's not fun. But I could not allow this to go any further. So 10 o'clock at night, I start warfaring. An hour goes by. I'm still warfaring. Your migraines wear you, physically wear you down. But I wasn't going to give up. I keep warfaring. 12 o'clock at night. I'm still warfaring against this. And I hear this voice. And it says, see that couch? Just lie down on it because we're going to take you home. I stop. I'm thinking, Holy Spirit. I'm thinking, is that you? I go, no, that can't be right. So I said, no, no, no. And I continue warfaring. Again. 
I hear a voice. No, just lie down. You, you've run your race. We are going to take you home. So I stop. I think, is that the Holy Spirit? I go, no, no, no. And I continue praying. A third time, a voice says to me, just lie down. You are going to be seed for Lancaster, USA. And I stop. And I'm processing this and I hear another voice. Another voice that says one word to me. Remember. And thoughts started coming back to me. The Lord had shown me my future. And this future has not come to pass yet. So how can it be the end of my time? How can it be the end of my race? So I said, no, 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 this is not going to happen. Now, remember, I still have my migraine headache. I'm still feeling ill, but I'm fighting. And when I said that, that last praise of this is not going to happen, about a meter from me, three feet, the spirit materializes in front of me. I instantly know by a witness of the Holy Spirit what this spirit is. It's a spirit of death. And this spirit was angry because it failed. And I looked into its eyes and I saw what it had planned for me had I lay down on the couch. It wanted to give me a heart attack. And it wanted to give me the most excruciating and long prolonged heart attack it could because it was going to feed off that fear and pain. So I got angry back. And I said, you will get out in the name of Jesus. I don't care who you are, you get out. And it flew out the window. This just drew me fast. And you know what else flew out their window? That migraine headache. By this time, you know, I, I, I washed up, thanked the Lord, went back to bed. It was one o'clock in the morning. That was three hours of warfare when I was not feeling like warfare, when I didn't have the strength for warfare. But you know who sustained me? Jesus did. We are coming into days of warfare where you will not be able to stand in your own strength. You will not be able to do it. That day is coming quickly. You have to rely on the Lord. You have to fall back on him. You have to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Should I buy this music or should I not buy this music? Should I buy this book or should I not buy this book? Should I walk in here or should I not walk in here? What do you want me to do, Holy Spirit? You know, the word of God says, even if possible, the elect will be deceived. Well, I saw that this week. In a vision, I saw the elite 
not surviving. Why? Because they stood in their own wisdom. They stood in their own understanding. They leaned on their own strength. And they were deceived and lost their lives. This is serious. You need to know the voice of the Holy Spirit like never before. You need to call upon the strength of the Lord like never before. Least you be deceived and lose your life. I'm going to talk about um, how can the devil take your life? God's God's decides. Well, let me just say two words: illegal contract. There was an illegal contract put out on my life. Had I said yes, I would have lost my life. There was no question in my mind. Had I had lay down on that couch, I would have lost my life. I would have signed that illegal contract. Satan is making up illegal contracts. You, Eve was the first person to sign one when Satan says, you won't die, you'll be a god. And what did she say? Yes. She signed that illegal contract. What's an illegal contract? It's a, a contract where someone says, I want you to take that person out and here's the money to do it. That's an illegal contract. And it took the blood of Jesus to erase that legal contract that Adam and Eve signed. He's still writing illegal contracts. Don't sign it. Because you will lose your life if you sign it. Just like I would have lost my life had I believed that spirit of death and lay down on that couch. I would have lost my life. There was no questions there. Do not sign the illegal contracts. If there is nothing you take away from this message, it's uh, nothing else you take away from this message is do not sign those illegal contracts. And how do you know they're illegal? Because it's not the Holy Spirit speaking to you. This is serious. You need to know what the voice of the Holy Spirit sounds like. Do that exercise I gave you. If possible, the elect will lose their lives. I so know what that means. But I want to talk about a experience the Lord um, He gave me two experiences with music and the anointing of music. So I want to shift um, gears here and talk about how to release the anointing of music. I was 
in a conference, the worship leader was singing. And I saw in the spirit realm a wave coming from the worship leader. And I watched this wave hit the congregation. And as it hit the congregation, they were lifted to heaven. I was going, what is that wave? And it's coming from the song leader. I was like, what is that? It wasn't until some time later the Lord gave me another experience. He took me in the spirit realm um, where I saw this angel being assigned to a um, worship uh, leader. And I looked at this angel and I was looking at it and its garment, it had flowers in it. But I'm thinking, it doesn't look like a flower pattern. So I walked up closer to it and I looked and saw that the flowers on the garment of this angel were actually living flowers. I was going, wow, that is just amazing. And the Lord started talking to me. He said, the anointing that this angel brings comes from the flowers. It's a garment. Put on the garment of praise. And he, the Lord said, this anointing comes from the angel. It goes into the song leader and then out into the congregation, the atmosphere, whatever it is. I was going, wow. And he said, the more pure the song leader, the greater the anointing because there's nothing hindering that flowing through. I said, okay. But he said, beware of pride. Because, you know, you, you become more clean, the anointing becomes larger, has more impact, has is more powerful, and people go, whoa, your song leading is amazing. Okay, don't do that. Don't do that. If you want to encourage people, say the Lord's anointing is was amazing today. But if you allow pride in and go, oh yeah, I'm good. Those angels can see pride and they back away. And then pride steps closer to you. If you continue in that pride, that angel steps away, pride gets closer. And in the end, that angel that was bringing that anointing is no longer there, and you are bringing another anointing. But it's not from God. So be very aware of pride ask god for humility have an attitude of lord i can do nothing without you and you, these anointings they're not yours the lord sends an angel with that anointing to allow it to flow through you you're the conduit nothing more the conduit you're the electrical wire that allows that to flow. It's not your anointing. You don't own it. Never was yours. Just let it flow through so it can help other people. So it can bring other people into areas of God that they've never experienced before. There is coming anointings that are going to be so powerful. They're going to knock people over and do things that we've never seen before but it comes through humility. Powers of the age to come are going to work through humility. Ask God for humility. Ask God to humble you. It's not pleasant sometimes, but it's good for you. And I'm going to end 
with this. Put God first. Because you are nothing without him. I am nothing without God. I am dead wood without God. Put God first. Do nothing without God. When you walk in the streets, God, what do you want to do? When you're going through online shops, God, what do you want to buy? Holy Spirit, show me. The time has come where we can do what we want is over. It's not what we want anymore. That life is over. We're coming into a generation of people where they will be totally sold out for God. Not my will, but yours. Put God first. Because if you don't put God first, you will lose your life. This is where we are in this age. We're in the end times. It's very clear we are in the end times. I know you will agree with me with this. Put God first in everything you do. Father, I pray right now and I release a strength, your strength, Father God, into your people. Open their ears to your voice, Holy Spirit. Open their ears to your voice like we've never heard before because we need you like never before. Things are serious and we need to take you serious, Lord. Give us an understanding that we need to lean back into you. We need to hold on to you like we are in a storm because we are in a storm. Father God, release an anointing that will clean up our lives, that will purify us so that we will release more of you into this dying world. Release it, Father God. Release your angels with those anointings. Release those angels that will bring the seven horn anointings, Father, release them to your people who are listening to this word and taking it on board. And I thank you, Father. I thank you for your son that you sent him to clean up this mess that we're all in right now. I thank you that you would sacrifice your son for us. I thank you, Father God, and I hold on to you. Thank you, Father. Amen. Back to you, Andy. Amen, Lord. You know, all week I've had the story going in my head about Walter Butler and uh, Walter Butler in the, practicing the presence of God, you know, being in the presence of God, um, had a very, very hard time when he was in a um, Christian um, training place, school. Um, and in this training school, they used to have chapel. 
And in the chapel, there's this young girl who was, you know, doing her Bible training there and used to get up and sing. And she had the most beautiful, beautiful voice, beautiful voice. And everybody just said, oh, you know, we felt the presence when you started singing and all the adoration went on to her. And uh, Walter Butler, you know, loved her singing. You know, but then suddenly the Lord entered into a study uh, one afternoon and said, I want you to give a message. And Walter Butler goes, yeah, absolutely. I'll give this message. He says, tell that young girl that her voice is an abomination to me. Walter Butler goes, oh, Lord, I can't do that. That will destroy her. She's only 18, 19 years old. He said, no, tell her that her voice is an abomination to me. And Walter Butler asked the Lord to explain that. He says, well, when she starts singing, she's in love with her own voice. She's putting adoration onto herself and not onto me. And that's an abomination. That's called pride. So he called this young girl in and she was in her first year of the Bible college, calls her in and said, I've got a very hard message to tell you from the Lord. He says, your voice is an abomination to the Lord. And this young girl just screams and cries and cries and rushes out of the office. <coughs> Excuse me. And he doesn't see her for months and months. She stopped singing in the chapel um, and just just almost disappears. And she's still at college, but she has literally disappeared. And then about six months later, there's a little knock on the door. And this girl enters into the room and says, Mr. Butler, when you gave me that message from the Lord, it was the hardest thing I have ever, ever heard in my life. It almost destroyed me. It almost put me to the brink of whatever. He said, however, she said, however, when I went to the Lord, he restored me. And he pointed out that the adoration I had for the Lord had gone off him and onto myself and has brought me back into being in love with my first love. And I have learned now that every time I stand before a, um, an audience to sing, I'm going to sing for you. And very slowly she came back on um, to sing in the, in the chapel, you know, on the Sundays and the evenings. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then slowly the anointing just increased where it went off her and onto the Lord. This is what we're after. This is what we are after. Every time we open our mouths, this is what it should be. Yeah, and the Lord has been really giving me, you know, some closed visions about this. Um, where I do not want anything that is giving me adoration. I want everything to go to him. I want Jesus to get the glory and for people to fall in love with him. Not bushfire, not Andy or Heidi or whoever is leading the worship or whatever. It should never, ever be about that. And this is my warning to you. I, you know, I was there in 2015 when Mark was at Lancaster. I was there. I was there and, and member Neville coming to us and saying, please pray, please pray. And uh, we knew there was a spirit of death over Mark because of this message. And my challenge to you is this, is, you know, Mark said it all. Listen, have a look at what books you're, you're picking up and reading. Is it of the Lord? Is it inspired in the inspiration of the Holy Spirit? Can I show you the most read book in my, my uh, library at the moment? I, I do very little reading. But the, the, there are two books that I will always pick up. That's the first one. The Word of God. And the one just that's helped me amazingly is a guy called, uh, it's written by E.W. Bullinger. And it's all about numbers. It just is my, you know, little 
thing I go to just to help me understand a little bit more. Um, but my main source is going to the Holy Spirit and just being led by him because of what is coming. I've had three dreams this week, three incredible, important dreams, all not just the music, but where we're headed. Now, folks, you know, I want to come, I want us to come into an agreement. Because that happened in Pentecost with the disciples, with the 120 that were up in the upper room. You know, they came in one accord. Didn't understand it, but knew that something was going to happen. And they just agreed with it. Something is about to happen. And we have got to come into agreement with it. With what the Holy Spirit is doing. And we've got to empty ourselves of ourselves. It's as simple as that because of what the Lord is going to bring. Can you be trusted with it? If this is about you launching a ministry, you can't be trusted. If this is about bringing people in to fall in love with Jesus, you can be trusted. If that is your driven thing is to introduce people to the man. That's what it's about. So they will fall in love with him. As I said yesterday in the meeting, I can't think about the Lord and, you know, and I get this in my stomach because I'm so in love with him. I am so in love with him. I can't think about him without it taking my breath away. And I want more of it. I want the Lord to switch up that sound in me that resonates to this broken world. And if you don't believe that the seven horn anointing is coming to you, it won't happen to you. If you think the seven horn anointing is for you to look good, it won't happen to you. It's going to happen to a people that have humbled themselves before the Lord. And are saying, Lord, it's all about you. Please, you know, we've got to be aware of the things of Satan, but do not focus on his works. Focus on the Lord. We've had, Heidi and I, you know, in our time with the Lord, you know, these last 15, 20 years, we've had news that would devastate most people. But, you know, it will not touch our house. Because... This is an illegal trespass. Don't tolerate it. Do not tolerate it. It is an illegal trespass. Illness, disease, infirmity is an illegal trespass. Do not tolerate it. Fight the fight. Until you, you're, you're healed. And I'm going to speak about this over the next few weeks. I want to be slow about it. I want to, because it's what Mark has been talking about. This is where we're headed. Now, if we're going to rely upon ourselves, it's not headed for us. It won't be given to us. Because the tabernacle of David is coming to us. Where the glory of God will shine out from us. But all we will be doing is is pointing to the man. It is. I hope it sobered you. I hope it sobered you to what you listen to, what you read, what you watch. Not everything out there. I would say, listen, you know, 10% of what is written is of the Lord. 90% is not inspired by the Holy Spirit. Listen to the music and just say, Lord, is this of you? Is there something here that, that brings me closer to you, that I fall more in love with you? Because a lot of the songs are not about the Lord. They're about us.
you know, and uh, I was there when Mark gave that uh, that talk at <laughs> Lancaster, and it, it rocked a lot of people. We had worship leaders. Can you remember that, Mark? From all over the, the country. Is it me? Am I? What am I? You know, and, and you know, I, I remember some of them being worried, and that's a good thing. But here's here's I've got this on my table. This is something you know that I'm adding to another bit to my kit. It's a fire steel. I had a dream last night about this. Um, we're in training. Each and every one of us is in training. And what we're in training for is to start a spark. It's to get an ember going. And uh, we've got to self-ignite, but we've got to get an ember going because this ember that we get going will feed a fire that will never go out. Never go out. And my prayer yesterday, if you heard my prayer yesterday, it would have shocked you. I was just out in the middle of nowhere with the Lord, walking with him, talking to him. But we've got to self-ignite, folks. Listen to me. People are streaming from all around the world. We've got to self-ignite in this because of what is coming. But it's to make him look good. And can you remember the man that, that touched the Ark of the Covenant that David was bringing back in to Jerusalem? And it's been carried on a cart, which was, it was never made for. It was meant to be, it was designed to be carried on the shoulders of the Levites. And he touched the cart and died. It was a bit harsh, but listen to me. Some of us will touch the glory of God and not survive. But those that don't touch the glory, but are just, as Mark said, being the, <coughs> the copper wire in the flow, the conduction of this. Okay. This is what it's about. <coughs> so Holy Spirit, I ask you now, let these words that you have spoken resonate deeply within us deeply within us to prepare us for what you're about to do. And Lord, we again offer ourselves. Lord, we do not want to hear those words over us from Matthew twenty-two sixteen that many are called to this, but few will choose. And Mark said this, he said, don't sign, don't sign up to these illegal things that the devil is bringing. Don't sign up for it. Don't agree with it, you know, his agreement. Here's the thing that we need to sign, folks. This is the one that will save us. This is the one that will protect us. Put your name to the covenant of the ketubah. Put your name as, yes, Lord, I am signing the ketubah and I want to keep my sign, my part of it. I want to keep my part of that agreement of the ketubah because I am your bride. And Holy Spirit, help me to keep my part of the ketubah. But I am part of your bridegroom, uh, your bridal paradigm. Put your name to it. Just say, yes, I agree. I want to be a part of this. I am your bride. And he will put his signature alongside it. And whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be protected and rescued. That's what the word means. So can I just implore you to put your name to the signature as a bride. Whether you do it in the physical and put it, you know, away with all your documents, that's great. If you do it in the spiritual, that's great. But sign that document. That's the one that's going to get us through these times. 
as the bride. So get yourself into that little place and say, here I am, Lord. Here I am. I offer my body as that living sacrifice, but do it as the bride. Can you remember in the ancient uh, marriage ceremony, after the supper, the bride-to-be, before the ceremony, would take herself away and set herself apart for the bridegroom. Set herself apart for the purposes of God. And wash herself and cleanse herself and set herself apart. This is what this year is all about. Setting ourselves apart for the things of God as his bride. It's the most important thing we can ever do after giving our lives to the Lord. Now we have to follow him as our bridegroom. So may God bless you. May God Andy, keep you. Andy, yeah. Can I just, before you close, can I just say something? Yeah, of course you can. Sorry, I didn't. Uh, so, yeah, I just really wanted to um, confirm um, some things Mark was saying, um, and also Andy, referring to the preparation of the bride and the seven horn anointing. And it has been so impressed on me how, yes, the scripture says the bride has prepared herself, but also it says that she was given white linen to wear. And if we look into the background of, of both in the Song of Songs, how the bride prepares herself. But also if we look at Esther, she is helped. And I thank the Lord for that. Exactly. And I wanted to just point that out in scripture where it does yeah. say in Esther chapter four, um, verse, uh, just had it, verse, uh, no, Esther chapter two, verse nine. Esther chapter two, verse nine. And the maiden, that's uh, Esther, uh, pleased and obtained his favor the kings and he speedily gave her the things for her gave her the things for her purification and her portion of food and the seven chosen maids to be given her from the king's palace and he removed her and her maids to the best apartment in the harem and i wanted to just revisit that because this is so crucial we prepare ourselves by positioning ourselves and being available and surrendering. And she underwent 12 months of preparation. And it's interesting, you know, we're talking about this season being a sign of preparing, a time of preparing ourselves. And so that's one aspect I just wanted to bring in because the seven, you know, made to assist her surely is speaking of the sevenfold spirit of God and the seven horn anointing the seven spirits of God. And I thank you, Lord, that you are not leaving us just to get ready on our own with, a, with some tatty linen, but Lord, that you are providing every bit of heavenly help that we need, Lord. And I just thank you for that. And also, if you read Song of Songs, chapter four, um, verse 16, I mean, there's lots in the Song of Songs that will confirm what Mark's saying about the sevenfold spirit um, helping the bride to prepare herself. But it says in chapter 4 verse 16 you have you have called me a garden she said oh i pray that the cold north wind and the soft south wind may blow upon my garden that its spices may flow out in abundance for you in whom my soul delights let my beloved come into his garden and eat its choicest fruits and this is the heart of the bride to be. The heart of the bride is saying, I want you to do in me what I can't do for myself, but I position myself there for yeah. you. I position myself. And Andy's speaking about the fire. You know, this, you know, it takes a spark to set a nation ablaze. And we want that fire, but we also know that we need to position ourselves um, next to that fire of God, because when we are caught on fire with his eternal flame, this is what will change a nation. But it's, it starts with us. And I just wanted to add that. And thank you, Mark, for a very, very good message. Very challenging. Always inward checking. And this is, I believe, you know, how we all need to be rather than looking first to see oh, who, who, what are they doing? We need to look at our hearts. I need to look at my heart all the time. 
it's a constant self-checker especially when you're in any form of upfrontness <laughs> so yeah it's really really important so thank you so much thanks Andy yeah I mean absolutely I just want to share something with you uh, I just feel this is pivotal um, yesterday in the meeting uh, two people prayed um, Pastor Cola and uh, uh, Sister Margaret Johnson some of the most anointed prayer I've heard some of the most, and I said to Heidi, you need to listen. I mean, uh, Sister Margaret prayed over for me and Heidi. And I said to Heidi, I said, you know, people prayed like that over us. We get the job done a lot quicker. It was some of the most anointed prayer I've ever heard. And so prophetic. I mean, she was praying stuff that she must have been listening to some of my prayers. It was so anointed. But here's what we're going to do. You know, there's bushfire ministries. We're a ministry. But what, we, what we're going to be doing when we come out of this lockdown, we're able to meet. We're going to... Whoops. Hey, Rich, can you just... Can you, just <laughs> you, know, we, you know, we want to call a holy assembly. Um, and we want to be able to gather together to worship, you know, to, to, to be just praying this next move of God in for this nation, for the UK. And we can't do it without you guys. So we'll put out some dates, you know, and you can sign up. It will be free. You can just come and turn up and it'll be over two or three days. But it's going to be sending on worship, prayer and the word. The three mixed in together because we need to self-activate and it will be a group of people. But Hardy, you know, you remember when you were talking about um, um, Gideon. And the yeah. first thing that Gideon did was destroy the works of his father. Yeah, the idols, absolutely. Can I, can I just throw this out? I've, I've had um, Zechariah come to me over the last three or four days. And just, he came to me yesterday, joined the meeting. He's come to me today. Um, and he's wanting us to read his book. And here's the first thing. He said, I want you to see this. If we want revival... This is the start of it. In chapter one of Zechariah, it says, it says in verse three of chapter one, therefore says to the east, therefore say to them, thus says the Lord of hosts, return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. This is where we're at. Do not be like your fathers. This is when, this is what I think Prince Philip's passing, as sad it has been, it's now into a new generation. We cannot be doing what our fathers did. Do not be like your fathers, to whom the former prophets preached, preached saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, turn now from your evil ways and your evil deeds. But they did not hear me or heed me, says the Lord of hosts. We must turn away from it now, from the things of what our fathers have done. And we must now turn back to the Lord for our nations and destroy the things of what our fathers have done and allowed to bring in to our nations. Can I challenge you now to start reading this week, the book of Zech Zechariah? And I believe there's an anointing where Zechariah will come and teach us. He will come and start teaching us out of this book. This is an end time book. And I believe there's an anointing now for his presence. And I want to hear when Zechariah comes and teaches you. Both personally and collectively as a body of people. But we need anointed prayer. We need the spirit of God upon that anointed prayer. We need to be hearing what he is praying in heaven and bring it down on earth. But I believe now it is time for a new generation to rise up, to tear down the idols of this world, of our nations, to tear them down. And I'll tell you, the idol that is going to be torn down in the UK is finance. Our reliance upon finance is coming down. 
across the West. So Lord, help us. God be among us. Help us tear down these idols that are in our nations, that are an abomination to you. As Heidi prayed in the spirit, Lord, show us what you hate. But also, Lord, show us what you love. You love your people. You love your mercy above judgment. So, Lord, have mercy upon us as this baton has been passed to us. Help us to tear down. Show us what we need to tear down. And give us wisdom. Lord, give us wisdom and revelation like never before. Please make that your prayer. Out of Ephesians, chapter one, give us wisdom and revelation. So we will be the answer and tear down the ordinances of man and bring back and restore your ordinance in society and in people. Lord, to tear down the laws of man and bring in your laws of love. We pray this now, Lord. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. We love you guys. This is probably, you know, it's an encouragement to us. You know, we've had more people join us streaming. We love you guys. You're part of us. We're going to put dates out, put them in your diary. If they have to change, we'll change them. You know, we'll go as, you know, how this COVID will release us, you know, this thing over society here in the UK. But we need to prepare ourselves as a bride. We need to prepare ourselves as the bride. We need to come together and pray. We need to come together and worship him at his throne room and be lifted higher where we have an open heaven above us as a group and individually over our homes as we open up those portals. Help us, Holy Spirit, to do it. Across our nations. Because Jesus, our nations need you. They don't need a man. The answer is not in a government or a political party. Our answer is in you. That we will lead people to fall in love with you, Jesus. And then, Holy Spirit, you will gut them. You will rip out in an instance what needs to be ripped out. And they will walk and be in places where the church needed to have been a hundred years ago. In our nation. Do it again, Lord. Do it again, Lord. Breathe your breath of life into us. We ask this now in Jesus' name. I don't know what it is, Mark. Every time you bring a message, it's a sober. It brings us soberly into his presence. Thank God for that. Thank you for your message. I know that you paid a price for that. I know that you paid a price. And, you know, can you please pray for Mark? You know, in your time with the Lord, just pray for him. You know, we love him. He is part of us and we are part of him. But we want to say goodbye to our streamers. We love you. Thank you for joining us in this next phase. Uh, we're going to move into and start exploring about the power of the age to come. And it won't be in a one bam you know, message. It's going to be over a series of messages because I believe the law wants to till the soil to plant a seed that will bring a crop and a fruit 
that will survive this time. Don't we all want to do that? So we love you guys on the, who are streaming and we, we want to say goodbye to you and, and please don't miss this. You know, put this, this time in your diary as this is it. We want to just meet together as his remnant, as his potential bride to fall madly in love with him. Come and possess us, Holy Spirit. Thank you. God bless you, streamers. We love you. I cannot say that liberally. I mean it from the bottom of our hearts. We want to love you, and, and we will see you next week. If you can join us, you know, um, on our prayer meeting, some of them are you know, really powerful, but they're going up a notch. You know, that's a thing out there, and maybe we'll, Heidi and I will get together and talk how we can do it. But we love you and, and uh, 